Hey everybody, happy Halloween. Happy Monday from Roosters. Happy Halloween. Happy Ohio State. Ain't no victory hey, over Penn State. No. We're in the Horseshoe Lounge. We're at Roosters. It's a fun casual joint. We're going to talk about Ohio State 44, Penn State 31. Justin Zwick is back. He's Ron Man. Burgundy. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby Carpenter. He has come as himself. Nicole Cox. Welcome us back into Roosters. And I'm Austin Ward. And I guess... We're not even going to wait. Nicole got another score prediction right, guys. We're, here we go again. Did she hit it right in the, right in the head? Right it was close. The, close enough, though, huh? I feel like, yeah, it was really close. 47-35 was my Ooh, pick. It's close wow. as, closer than all of us were. She had I it feel close. like Bobby didn't like my pick. I didn't like it, but it was real. It was, it real. was real. She got it right. It wasn't wow. a cover for Ohio State, so she nailed that part, too. It was close. They had a chance. They're, we can argue whether Ohio State should have won more comfortably or not. I'm going to try not to have those conversations. <laughs> Why? They should think. have. It's all about comfort. <laughs> Life is all about comfort, Austin. No, I think that I, th- I feel like I've been too critical of wins that are significant. Going to Penn State and winning by 13 is a big deal. The 13th ranking team in the country by two scores. I said this to you last week. Like, just to focus on the first two quarters and then dwell on the negatives. Like, yeah, we can talk about things Ohio State can do better, but I don't. I don't want to diminish the value of being eight and zero and beating the number thirteen team on the road in front of a hundred. I mean, that's a hostile environment there, and that, and a, the loudest speakers known to humanity. Yeah, they, <laughs> I know, and when I did the pick, guys, it's not that I don't believe in our team, and I think like I, I mean, I would hater, love for Nicole. no, I would love for the score to be like. Actually, I don't know if I would love for the score to be less because I felt like it was a very intense game there was something going on all the time and i know people don't like that they like us to like blow out the other team you know but Mm -hmm. i really feel like this was the first time we were going to play someone that was actually like that had true that had talent you know that was (laughs) (laughs) i don't mean it like that no no no, that came out but you know what i mean like we were playing a team that you're not really that wrong a real close (laughs) to our level and and in that environment that fan base is I mean, you can feel it through the TV, I feel like, yeah, as you're watching that's, it. That's so. because they've got a great DJ. He's leading the play there. Just, <laughs> I didn't realize that they but, were pumping music. Yeah, I didn't. I just, it was just as loud there in 2020 as it was on Saturday. Really? Because there are a bunch of well-placed speakers. Uh, Bill Landis can attest to standing next to them when he was in the student section as a, an undergrad there. They, they pushed the envelope. Interesting. Uh, I'm not... I, I thought that's I mean, kind I, of taboo. I mean, yeah. I mean, I feel like when we were there in '05 for, for the for the night game. Yeah, I don't remember speakers. I just remember it being so loud you couldn't but hear. Their fans also from are the fans, yeah, loud and good. Yeah. You combine them, I think that's what makes Beaver Stadium a much more challenging place. Can you know. hear the music? Like, uh, what, can the players hear the music? Oh yeah, I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to call <laughs> as, you, as you're trying to talk to your guys in the huddle or on the sideline. I, I guess I kind of get that. Yeah, but I feel like when it definitely you, adds to that. Atmosphere. I mean, you can be in the huddle and the guy can be talking and you're reading lips because you cannot hear him. It's that loud. I mean, when CJ is having to lean in and get in delay of games, so everybody's yelling at him about that. If yeah. if you don't have to walk forward, you can just bark, bark, oh, yeah, bark, yeah, bark, yeah, yeah. Set the ball. Like, let's go. It's Much easier that way. It's incredible. Um, Bob, what do you what do you make of this win? Um. I'll tell you this. I, there's a lot of places you go to complain. We can focus on some of the good things. JT obviously played really well. I thought the defense held the, held their own and played really, really well. I, I, the only, I'm really upset. The only thing with the defense I'm upset about, they had the missed tackle by JK. Because I was thinking, you know what, we're a little slow on offense, but they're not doing anything. Right. And uh, this defense, defense is a really good tackling defense. If they continue to tackle well, that doesn't happen. And I don't. that game may hinge the whole way. We may score again and go up three scores. It's like, all right, what's happening now? That, and then the final drive, scoring drive of the game for Penn State. I think it was three or four plays, chunk, chunk, blown mm-hmm. man coverage, and they score easily. And that blew the cover for a lot of people, me as well. Um, but I'm not upset about blowing the cover. I'm just upset about the fact that. That's what we went out there with at did, the end yes. of the game, yeah. You don't just, it's one thing if they go eight or nine plays mm-hmm. and slowly yeah. dink and dunk, and you're yeah. like, all right. You got 30 seconds left on the clock. All right, you got your garbage touchdown. We're out of here. I'm not giving you a 20 yard over route yeah. with nobody on them where you can run 40 yards and then get out of bounds. Like, I don't need to see that. Yeah. And that's the one thing, because that to me is a la- it's a it's a lapse in focus. Yep. When the game was tight, it wasn't like you were beating this team and they've got a lot of garbage scores at the end. I mean, you were down. Then all of a sudden, Buckeye Avalanche, and then, okay, mm-hmm. just finish the game. Right. And I guarantee you, Ellen Perry, uh, Tim, Jim, like all those guys, they're probably focused on that last drive. Like this, 
should never happen. Yeah. Not here. Catch them, tackle them. Yep. Catch it, tackle them. And you know what? If they finally get down there and score, all right, we get a PI. Okay, things happen. But guys running wide open and free can't miss the tackles, can't blow the coverages. Outside of that, I mean, I could yell at Tommy. I could say, listen, Tommy, when I'm doing my bicep workout, come over here and get some with me so you could squeeze him more and pull that dude in. But you're talking about. He K- made a hell of a play K- just K- to get there. Yeah, just to get there. But he yeah. sifted through it. You had Katron Allen, who's a good player. You're running like you're going opposite angle of him, trying mm-hmm. to pull him down. You couldn't really get a pad on him. Like It's it, tough. It's tough. And you had 15 tackles. So, okay, the one you miss, I'm, am I really going to get that upset about it? You're on the one. You held him at that point. After a situation you shouldn't be, I will be upset as well about the lack of focus on that whole series. Yeah. You know, you don't jump off sides. They miss the kick. Okay. Then, you know, John Cage just steps over, which I don't know about that. I'm going to have to look at the interpretation of that rule. I thought it was like shoulder pads over shoulder pads. They called it. It is what it is. Then they decide to go for it because James Franklin, as much as we like to make fun of him, he did yeah. read that and said, hey, I'm not going to give a guy my chance. <laughs> yeah. Give my guy a chance to go 0 for 3 from like 30 yards out. Fool me once. Shame on me. <laughs> Let's go for it. Yeah. Let's go for it this yeah. time. And they ultimately go for it and get it. So he bet on it, he bet on his team, and they got it done. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the defense played, I mean, to, to go off what Bob was saying, I think they played great. It was just four or five tackles that they didn't make, right? That blew, you know, made some big plays or got some touchdowns, you know, there on the goal line. Uh, so I, I think they played amazing. You know, going into this game, I would have probably been more of the forty-five to seventeen, yeah. you know, score just because you don't know. We had seen Penn State look good. We had seen Penn State look really bad. Okay, so they play Michigan. They're getting two point two yards a carry or whatever it was, you know, or a play, and then they go up to seven yards a play the next game. So you weren't sure. It's a tough place to play, and they they came out and they played a good game, even with Clifford having three interceptions. I mean, he still played a tough game. He had them. He had them in a position. Um, to, you know, to, to, to be in there and, and have a lead. But the Buckeye Avalanche took over. And, that, and that's just what we expect, right? I mean, it's even when things aren't going well against Iowa the first half, man, we look a little off. Okay, whoop, there it goes. You know, I mean, like now we're up by a couple touchdowns. So the, the way this offense can score, it's uh, it's amazing. But, uh, man, I don't – that first half was rough. Just play calling, not really – it just didn't seem like we had much of a, a feel for what we – wanted to do against what they were doing, right. uh, you know, and, and, and we get it figured out. And it's the second week in a row where I feel like it's been that way. And so you get paid a lot of money to go, to go into halftime and make those adjustments and come out and, you know, and figure it out. So uh, going into happy Valley is a tough place. Uh, no doubt about it. So uh, coming out with a win, getting over 40 points, Ryan day is now 33, and zero, and we score 40 or more in the big 10. So that's, he's probably going to stay unbeaten. Well, you would think so, yes. That's especially, especially in the Big Ten. It's, we're not the Big Twelve, right? A little better. And Nicole, you just wanted to be entertained, so. Well, no. I here's here's my theory. Nicole's in an she was in we an anxiety a, bag. I we got a theory. Yeah. I just couldn't believe there was just so much going on. But here's the thing: I think when we looked at the Penn State Michigan game, that was their first big game in their schedule. So I I think it is best for the team, even though it's hard to watch to experience something like this because it only makes us stronger for when we play Michigan. It's easy to go out there and play these teams that aren't on the same level as us. It, it, it's easy. You get in a routine. It's it's almost, It can be almost boring, in my opinion, you know? And so I think that this brings, you know, roots them, brings them back down to a level of like, okay, the, we have a challenge. It challenges them. And it, that's, I think that's one of the most addicting feelings of making you better as a person is, you know, making mistakes. So, you know, you never want to feel that way again. Mm. So the guys that missed tackles, I think they also started panicking a little bit. Like the more things were missed, the more you could see the nervousness and like, okay, we got to get it together. And then they'd make another mistake. You know, I think it was good that Noah Ruggles made that kick right before going into half because it brought the score at least to 13, 14, 13 instead of what was it? 14, 10, I think. Mm -hmm. So just to go into the half, just kind of knowing that I think it kind of was a reset knowing they could pull it together, which they did. They show. And that was my theory when picking the score. I know, I know they're going to pull it together at the end. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like I just knew that it would be a lot different of a game than what we've been watching. Bob, you and I both needed to just, be smarter with our money and listen to the ace <laughs> prognosticator over here Absolutely. who's getting it right every single week. So that's on us. It is. Yeah. We didn't learn. And maybe this will be the week you guys do learn. 
if she doesn't pick Ohio State to cover against Northwestern, based on what those I think, come on, I think my streak Iowa is gone. I think my streak is gone. I do. I think Don't, it is. Do we get a thousand yards Don't of offense that. this week? Well, they might not, but if Northwestern scores, I will be absolutely uh, stunned. Yeah. Iowa had four, which is Iowa had I don't four hundred yards score. of offense no. on Northwestern. Did they? They probably matched yeah. their total for the season. Oh yeah, in that they, one game they were averaging two fifty a game, and they had like <laughs> two. They had like two hundred and a half. Wow. All right, well, we'll yeah. get to that. Yeah. First, we have to look back yet again with some roosters. Buckeye leaves for Ohio State from a double digit win in Happy Valley, and Nicole's going to lead the way. So I'm going to obviously have to pick JT Tui Moloa. Mm. Just Ooh, JT Tui Moloa. Tui just rolled wow. off the tongue, too. You guys, it took a whole car ride home from here to learn that. <laughs> just practicing it the whole way. Tui Moloa. I love saying it, too, now. But um, he was incredible. He, he was. really was. And you you could just tell after each of those amazing plays he had, you could just see his confidence build. And it really added to the Ohio State atmosphere in that absolutely – insane Penn State <laughs> vibe going on in there. Yeah. So, the with their fan base. Yeah, what a game. That was a historic <laughs> performance. Man. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't done enough of the research to know. I'm just going to assume that no defensive end has ever had two interceptions, a pick six, a strip sack, uh, an assisted interception, yeah. and two sacks. And it's incredible, it, isn't it? It is. I mean, it's uh, forced yeah. fumble and recovered. Yeah. And recovered yeah. He, he yeah. recovered his own strip sack. Did yes. not, I, I left that part out of yeah. the crazy – We've seen this against Penn State specifically for Ohio State breakout performances for a Bosa, a Chase mm-hmm. Young. You, I mean, that was not just. Yeah, one but those of the best. are like one plays that you remember because they sacked him with somebody yeah. else, or this. You know, this was like a, a whole. Oh my game. gosh, uh, what is happening? Yeah, one of not just one of the best performances by an Ohio State defensive end ever. One of the best in college football yeah. history. That's a mouthful, but yeah. I don't mm. can't look at it and say that that's hyperbole. That's just a, that's real. Yeah, it is the real. Beast. He's awesome. Beast. That's right, Jay Z. Uh well I'm gonna go with Marvin Harrison Jr. Of course. I think okay. uh man I saw you know some stats they spit out afterwards I think it was like ten you know, ten catches hundred and some eighty yards yep. but all the thing that was like, yeah all ten were for first downs that's what it was I knew a lot were for first downs and I I just remember the one with I think we had five minutes left it was third and ten he hits the slant caught the ball and you could just see him accelerate like he knew where he needed to get for that first down a lot of times you'll have that receiver run a route like that they you know, they'll reach out for it or, you know, whatever. But you could just tell. He knew he had three yards he had to get to. And, man, what, big play. Five minutes to go, we moved the clock. Or, you know, we moved the chains. Uh, and then all, all game long. I just think he's that guy that you can rely on. Throw it up there, 50-50 ball. He's big. He's strong. He's I mean, he's got everything. They talk about how he's going to be one of the best receivers in the league in five years. It's, you know, you see it. I mean, the kid is special. And I think having him with JSN out this whole year, he's really stepped up. His game has come – to a different level, and man, it it's going to continue to go that way. I think the more you know experience he gets, the more time he gets with CJ out there. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's nuts. So I, I I think he was a big part of that offense, and uh, yeah, so he gets mine. I'm going to go with uh, and I go with him almost every week now. Uh, I guess I could go with Farmer Gronk. He you know I know he was, <laughs> he got roasted a little bit. People were all over him about some of the blocking on the bubble screens, but then he had the two for on. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't forget how to block. He didn't. And then he, had to, right and he broke three tackles on his touchdown yes. on the little tight end high. Yes. But I'm going to go with the two linebackers, uh, Steele and Tommy. 26 tackles combined. You know, I believe 15 and 9. You know, Penn State had 111 rushing yards, but they were all over the place making plays. Like, you love it when they throw underneath passes. The windows are so tight. They're on them. They get them down. They're both, both very sure tacklers. And they're really what this defense needs. And, you know, you hear those co- the coaches sing praises about them all the time. But uh, it's tough to think of a time outside of, obviously, the goal line where those guys are missing tackles. Mm-hmm. They do a great job. Once they get there and they get there in a hurry, they get guys on the ground. I will give it to Kate Stover then. He, yes, Farmer Gronk. I, I mean, I don't know that <laughs> there's some of this play calling. Jay-Z alluded to it. Maybe we'll get to it. It's going to be harder if Penn State or Iowa or whoever else knows exactly what concepts you want to run. I know that there's the coaching cliche that you can give them the playbook, but you still have to execute it. Well, if Penn State is flowing and, and stunting and doing everything else because they know what plays are coming, that's going to make it harder for Kate Stover to make every single block. I'm not going to hold that against him. When it mattered most, he delivered there. He gave us your best. He gave the best. And he he is <laughs> – I asked Schlegs about this on Sunday. I don't think anyone wants to volunteer to tackle Kate Stover. Now, he <laughs> said he wanted to try. I said, all right. I could see that. I could see that. I said, okay, go for it. Mm-hmm. Have fun. 
one, two, three Penn State defenders took their opportunity, and Kate Silver said, no, I don't think so. Yeah. We're going to punch this in. Ohio State's going to get out of Happy Valley with a win. Uh, happy ending in Happy Valley. That's that's what the Buckeyes were after for. Uh, they got it. They came back uh, victorious because Kate Stover, a great captain, uh, never quits, competes at a high level. And when the opportunities are there, he's made the most of them this year. I think um, Bill was talking about after the game that he's maybe three catches off, uh, but ahead in yardage and touchdowns of what Jeremy Ruckert did all of last season. Yeah, and which is nuts, right? He's he's earned that. Yeah, he's. Some of that is probably because Jackson Smith and Jigba has not played uh, a full game to this point. But, all right, well, the reason that Ohio State is still averaging 49 points per game is because Cade Stover has helped fill that void. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's been fun to watch him do that. It yeah. has. And that means that they got win number eight, Bob. Hey, so what's that mean? Yeah. Well, the best part about being 8-0 and is a chance to go 9-0. and What's and the best part of November? The best part of November is being a contender. Hey. And we have the... <laughs> Roosters Buckeye Bowl trip giveaway. Oh, that's what this mm. is. Which, yeah. if you that's scan that QR terrific code. QR code, you go to RoostersWings.com. Uh, you're going to get a chance to win. When do we draw them? Every Tuesday? Today. Nicole? I draw them today. You draw them today. You let Monday. them know by two, Monday. Somebody's so getting a, we still have a four. We still have four treat. opportunities left Probably. to win. Is it four? Yes. There's four. We have four games left. Yep. Four chances to win. Get a pair of tickets. Airfare. Deluxe hotel. Deluxe yep. accommodations. Yep. Hey. Mm-hmm. Roosters, so they get a little gift bag, some mm. swag, all kinds of great things. It's an incredible trip. Incredible Scan trip. the QR code, rooster'swings.com. What's, the- What's in the swag bag, Nicole? Oh, just a lot of Roosters yeah, stuff. A of- and a lot of, like, necessities. You know, we put our little mini first aid kit. You never, when you're <laughs> Gotta have hotel, that. You, you never know. Mac and cheese know. bites. You're stub your toe. No, no food, I'm Just the recipe for mac and cheese. Or mac and cheese, but is that the appetizer yep. Tuesday? Mac all right, and cheese bites, back you don't say. to back weeks, Back guys. to back weeks, mac Pretty and incredible. cheese. Thanks. The standard is the standard. The standard really is. is. If you are the Coming king, in here. if you're the king of appetizers, you, you stay on the throne well, until somebody knocks <laughs> you. Until somebody yeah, exactly. you. Two bucks <laughs> all day long, yeah. Tuesday. Don't miss that one. Um, Northwestern is the opponent on Saturday, Nicole. 11 a.m. Central Time. Really excited mm. to get over to Evanston for what should be a great, great road experience. Just the same. Oh, 100%. As going to Happy Valley great. was last yes. week. It's going to be super exciting for me. You'll get to watch it in the comfort. You and Bronson watch on, on the couch. Where do you yeah. set up for this one? Okay. Actually, in the family room. In the family room. Okay. So do you have your own seat that you have to sit in every game? <laughs> or? I just, I don't know if I can watch a game with him again. You just get so emotional and so just dad irritated. Is. And I just, I'm like, pull it together. Yes. I can't handle that. Well, Nicole, it's because you're a professional analyst now. You no. Just, <laughs> you're, you're it's like, you know what's going to happen. And you're just like, just relax. They just no, this. Just watch. No. They're going to win by 12. The adjustments, they're going to make at halftime. They're going to be fine. Here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> It's just insane. Okay, but so what do you got this I, week? I'm going to pick 72 3. Oh, 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 wow. Go ahead. I said, I think my streak is over. Oh, I yeah. think I'm off on that one. But I, I had 67 3, but I just feel like they're going to score a lot. 72 just looks bad. Yeah, that's. I'm wow. I'm curious how Northwestern's going to string together a drive and score because they are horrific. But giving them a field goal. <laughs> That's fair. I can't question. Yeah, I mean, I've, yeah. I haven't learned my mistake. What am I doing questioning Nicole? Uh, well, you guys, I already said the streak's over. It's just you got to take into consideration those things, like the schedule, like I was saying earlier. You know, that was the first big game we had. It's I think it was too. so great for us. It road. was great for us. Yeah. Yeah. And now it kicks off a really fun stretch of Northwestern, Indiana, and mm, November, baby. Just exciting. Maryland might be the best team outside yes. of Penn State and Michigan they play in the Big Ten. One hundred percent. Two is back. You can sling it around a little bit. Our secondary will two get a workout. Tito. Yeah. Tua. That's Slayer all I know of this. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we don't want to skip ahead because we have such a fun opportunity uh, against Northwestern for Ohio State on Saturday. Nicole's got a lot of more, a lot more work to do to get ready for trick-or-treating and Halloween. <laughs> mm-hmm. What are you going as tonight? I'm not going as anything. I know I'm lame. I'm That's lame. Not but my son's going as Michael Myers. For the first time, we have like a scary character nice. instead of an action figure. You know? okay. I mean, a lot of great Michaels in this world. Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan. He was Michael, Michael Jackson Phelps. Michael one year. Phelps, yeah. <laughs> now Mike Myers. There's a great little Mike Myers sketch where you can see that online. Uh, why I'm Mike here, Myers I'm is the best. Like training, lifting weights. He goes, how do you think I'm over here and then end up in your car <laughs> and I'm already in the back seat? It's like I'm training, running <laughs> on the treadmill. <laughs> you, you, you rise to the level of your training. Bob. That's the only way. 100%. All right, Nicole is getting out of here. Berm's going to slide in for the rest of the show here on Roosters. It's a fun, casual joint. Fun, casual chat here on the podcast. Thanks to Nicole. Be right back with more. 
Roosters has been so fortunate. We just want to be able to give some of that back to the community. They donate to organizations that are near and dear to their heart, and we're so fortunate to have been with Roosters now for a long time. They will always go above and beyond to help support our foundation to further help veterans. It's just a wonderful feeling to know that Roosters supports the Buckeye Cruise for Cancer. All the folks at Roosters are just genuinely kind folks, and they want to make a difference. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters. Welcome back into the Horseshoe Lounge at Roosters. It is a fun, casual joint. And hey, Berm's here. Hey, Berm. All what the should, way from Michigan. What should he talk about? Buckeye leaves? Yeah. Who's he going to give his Buckeye leaf you know, to? In a game Just like one? This one? Just one. In a game like this one, there's a lot of things that can happen. But the difference in the game is C.J. Stroud is Ohio State's quarterback and Sean <laughs> Clifford is Penn State's. Do you think it'll be different if Drew Aller is Penn State's quarterback? Uh, Not it wouldn't have been different Saturday, I don't but think. Maybe in the coming years. But uh, winter is coming. No, I mean, Drew Aller's a good player. Drew Aller's right? a different type of player, but I don't know that he's significantly different than Christian Hackenberg. If you can't protect the guy, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, he's a good thrower. He's a big kid. He's going to be able to, to do some things. He's going to take away some of their ability to do what Clifford does in the run game. He moves well, and he, he moves better than you think. He gobbles up some yards. Yeah, I mean, he's so he, tall. He's so long. It's but, like Josh Allen a little bit. Uh, to me, I mean, the, the difference is easy now. Well, CJ Stroud is the guy who's a little bit. CJ Stroud is the guy. So CJ Stroud gets my bucket leaf because it, at a point in the game where Ohio State could have folded, uh, which I think people have been wondering, like, what's CJ going to be like in those moments on the road in an extremely difficult environment? Some of his, I mean, he was pretty close to perfect the entire day throwing the ball. He had a couple times when he was a little out of things awareness wise when it came to the play clock, but. Um, he had a couple throws in this game. How much do you think that was due to the noise? A lot. Uh, but I also think it's p- part of the coaching staff's problem. I mean, if they're not getting yeah. into plays fast enough, uh, and, and if you don't have a coach designated to watch the clock in that situation, I mean, I talked about this this morning uh, clock with, with Bill. You know, the first – Somebody on first, staff should be. When Ohio State was on that uh, their second drive of the game when they kicked the, the 54-yard field goal that they missed, or 53 – like it's third and ten, and you're at your own twenty, or you're at their twenty-eight yard line, and you get a delay a game, and I don't know how that's possible in that situation. Ryan Day has said over and over that he doesn't care about first half timeouts, and he'll use them whenever. If you don't use it in that situation, I'm not sure if someone's just not doing their job or what. Yeah. But does it feel like we're at the line of scrimmage we a little was, too long, was, making changes? Hold on, Jay Z. Yeah. We once got a timeout. We once got to delay a game coming out of a timeout on offense. Yeah, and they got one. Punting the ball on Saturday. I yeah, mean, but coming out, you'd think you'd get the play and figure it out. What yeah, we're the coming do. out of a timeout, you always feel like you got to forget you what game that game was. I, and I don't remember if that was you or Troy. Oh, yeah, it was. But I remember sitting there and I'm like, how is that? How did this even just, oh, what, what did we just talk about for the last was yes. like full TV timeout? And we get out there <laughs> and like, we're going like this. And I'm like, what? How did we not have yeah, to play? What I did know. we call timeout for? I know. Uh, you know, I thought that CJ, uh, the, you brought up the play to, to Marvin Harrison, the uh, the sliding catch on nice. the end with five minutes to go in the game. I think if Ohio State wins a national championship this season, that play and then yeah. the subsequent play, the 40-yard yeah, ball afterwards, yeah. Buka yeah. in the slot and the seam, it is going to be that two-play stretch where you're like, that may have been mm-hmm. the most important throw of C.J. Stroud's life because I'm telling you, the way that it felt in that stadium, it's 30-24 to 24 at that point with five minutes There's to go. There's a chance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you don't pick up that third down, yep. I can I just – I'm not going to – I can't say I guarantee it, but there's a very real chance Ohio State loses that game 31-30. to 30. Was Penn State going to start blocking JT to a Molo or not throwing balls directly? Yeah, they the just went down the field they and got a field goal though, right? I, I mean, don't even they, – they literally were making – they made things happen. Uh, yeah, they made yeah. plays happen when they – they had almost 500 yards of offense, so it's to suggest that yeah. they weren't moving the ball in the second half or, I mean, even in the that second half. Something couldn't have happened, something happened there, happened. yeah. They had almost 500 yards of offense, and they had 80 plays of offense. Yeah, that first down with the five minutes left was big. I mean, we were at, what, close to midfield? You're at the 40? 40. I mean, like, that's that's a big play to get. You're at the minus 40. It's third and 10, and and he throws an absolute dart in a situation where it had to happen. Uh, And as loud as it could possibly be, next play throws for 40. And what a ball that was. And And so air out of – exactly. So, to me – C.J. Stroud is the guy because he well, he could I, be the guy every week. Yeah, you know, I mean. he is the guy every week. But to to go on the road and be at Penn State, you know, he's really only played in one other real environment, yeah. and that was in Ann Arbor last year. And he played pretty well in that game, all things considered. Yeah. I mean, he, obviously, the Buckeyes didn't win, but I don't put for somebody that, who just had the flu. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't put that on him as a loss. I yeah. think that Saturday people were sort of 
expecting that because he has this reputation as being like not as fiery a competitor as people want him to be. Even Keel. But it's Were you disappointed that he didn't go into the Ann Arbor locker room last year? Uh, like go up the ramp with them and try to fight? A little that, bit. Okay. A little bit, but no, I mean. And <laughs> these we had already had a guy shank somebody in that game, so we you know, didn't want more. The thing that I liked the most about Saturday was after the 48-yard pass to Ibuka or 46-yarder after He that, was juiced. He was amped up, and you could see that, and that was a guy that really sort of just. No, I was amped up. It was when Ibuka just. Yeah, I did. <laughs> the, the, pat, the, patented, the patented celebration. Was, the receiving core and CJ, I mean, they've been really rolling with that. I felt that, like the emphasis on that was really big. It was that moment. Was that mean, he seemed though? to put some stank on. Oh, that one. I mean, he really shook it out too. Yeah, that no, was the big right. piece. Yeah, he got it out. Woo. Got it out. Is Ooh, the implication buddy. that you have Man. a bunch of snot on your fingers? I don't know. You can imply. You can derive yeah. whatever you want it's from that. It's not really what I think of. Your fingers are so sticky. I just yeah, you had to get the stickiness off. But you're like, wipe. I don't know. I don't. America, can you let us know what that means? In the, in the Can we get section? some B-roll just flashing over top of this of all the different times? The first time I saw it, I was kind of surprised. Now, it seemed like commonplace, but that was a really big moment. He had the solo, oh, the one cool. shot on him, and Emeka, I think he looked up in the stands, and he was throwing it out to everybody. This is for you. Well, this is if for you notice this in that fourth quarter, every time Ohio State did anything, they looked up into the upper deck in the far right of the stadium because that's where that's all really the parents put everybody. There were a lot of fit. Yeah, I'll... <laughs> Anybody thinks road seats for parents are good? I know, they're right? Yeah, they're up in the top corner. <laughs> you want to get us some road seats? Uh, you might want to buy them online. Yeah. I can get them for you, but they'll be terrible. Yeah. There was a decent contingent of Ohio State fans really up in was. that upper deck in the one end zone. Well, that's there was all a, parents. Lot, yeah. a lot more of them scattered throughout the stadium than I expected as well because it's pretty noticeable when the red to the blue. Yeah, when the opponent has a, yep. a stripe out, you can see lots of specks of blood throughout there. Mm, the know. specks make me bleed my own blood on the floor. Right. <laughs> Bleeding their own blood yeah. out there. Uh, Jay Z, you had a, a point you wanted to make about the play calling. I think that if yeah. anything, I, it's hard to criticize teams that adjust, as I said, and score at will in the second half. I I understand why there's a feel like maybe Ohio State doesn't adjust quickly enough to what they're seeing. Maybe that's what you're. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess quickly enough because it's like you know we, how many times did we throw that little bubble screen, which I, I I get and I love. And I get why you're doing it as well, which we went back to it and tried to get the gimmick play off of it yeah, from, like, the 20-yard line. You know? Yeah, I mean, they didn't work. The play off of that is then probably not going to work. Uh, so it just felt like we were just – I, I don't know. But then right before half, what happened? Vertical, vertical, vertical. Move right down the field, you know? Like, so we, we got there. Um, but it was just, you know, frustrating, especially when things aren't – you know, if we're running those plays and we're getting those blocks and they're going for five, seven yards, it's not that big of a deal. But, you know, when they're behind the line of scrimmage each time or you know, it just doesn't seem to be going and then we just don't feel like we're moving on from that, that, that got a little frustrating. But, they, like I said, they figured it out before half. Oh, vertical. How about that? When that happens, oh, they blitz somebody. Somebody is replacing that guy. And that's how it should work. And then we move right down the field. So, they got it going. And, and I'm going to say this. I, I think against so, Iowa – I think against Iowa, Ryan Day was putting this offense in some situations that he knew probably wasn't going to go well for them because he knew that Iowa was no issue, right? I don't think he did that against Penn State, but but were they trying to get something on film? Were they, you know, I, I think he might be working some some angles that working way. Some angles. That's actually my question of, like, the week for Ooh. Ohio State. Uh, if I was to... You get uh, Austin and Bill do this on Tuesday mornings on the podcast daily. Like Snappy they, Jays. They ask. They, they talk about the questions they want to ask Ryan Day. Well, uh, they, if, the questions they get to ask yeah. Ryan. Day. <laughs> so for me, the question this week is this: How much do you balance in game doing things that you know you need to get better at to win a national championship versus doing what you need to do to win the game you're in? How mm-hmm. much do you treat the game like practice versus yeah, a game? Yeah. Because it's they, I think that <laughs> yeah, they, that's really the question. I think that they know that they yeah. really need one quarter to beat most teams that they're going to play, right? Yeah. Uh, and at, at some juncture, you're playing with fire. We're like, okay, we've gone a little bit too far. And yeah, one hundred percent. Saturday may have that was on the precipice of being too far. Didn't pull but, out quite in time. But I wonder. Yeah. Like, how do you balance, like, if we're going to beat Michigan and beat Georgia and beat Tennessee, what do we have to do to win those games versus what do we need to do to win this game? And, and well, that's why, I guess, like, Iowa, we're running yeah. third and twos into ten people on the line, you know, in the right. box. Like, that's not going to 
work most of the time. Listen, you know? but I think he knows that they need to work. I know. Well, that's I know. Did later in the year, yeah. that's, that's why I think, you know, I said if, that and my friends are like, oh, no, you're crazy. You would no. never do it. I'm like, ah, I don't know I'm about that. i you right now. There's if, no chance. If you listen to Ryan all year long. I mean, people, they, everyone hears what they want to hear. Yeah. Just listen to what he says. Listen to the points of emphasis of what they've been driving home, competitive stamina, toughness, toughness running the yeah. football, all of those things. He tells you it in there. He, I don't think he overtly comes out and says it, but the messaging has been, the, the messaging is the messaging, and it has been consistent, yeah. yep. and I think that's against Iowa. Hey, they may, we could probably yeah. throw on them for 500 yards if we need to and score 70 points, but we need to make sure we can still run the football, and I need our guys to know if we have problems doing that, that we have to get them mm-hmm. fixed. Because yeah, they're a good defense. They're so a we're good gonna defense. We're going to go against that front. And, and we'll be fine scoring. This week, it was yeah. a little more of a balance because Penn State yeah. can go score the football on yeah. you. Yeah. They have talented guys in the secondary. So it's like, oh, uh, we can screw around. Not say screw around. We can just keep working on this. And then we need to throw, like, we'll just turn on the, the touchdown. Oh, I know, right? Isn't it nuts? Yeah. And just start throwing the ball down. Oh, we'll the go field. to this playbook. Do, do, do. You know, like, here's yeah. stuff we want to work on. Then we're going to go to this playbook to score. But, uh, Burma, yeah, to boom, your boom. point, I think that there is a huge degree of that. The emphasis that they're putting on it saying, hey, we have to be able to run the ball against Michigan. Yeah. And here's the other thing. And people bring up, you know, Michigan, how well they ran it against Penn State. Penn State on the road versus Penn State at home, I think, is a, there's two, two different teams. They were much more amped up at home. They played a lot better than I said, but than they had before. But you still have to be able to get push. You have to be able to get seams. And it's fine that they know you're going to run the ball at certain times, but they don't know where and they don't know how. And I think the creativity, well, creativity Penn State and of Iowa, it, Bob, it seemed like they did. And that's my point is yeah. that's that what you need to figure out is the, it's I have no problem. <laughs> Their teams, hey, you know what? We're going to run it every play. Every teams know the academies are going to run it every play, and there's years where they win ten games doing that. Why? Because you have no idea where you're going to run it, and they out execute you. And that is the thing that I think that they're working on right now and trying to figure out. Because when they play Michigan up there, there's going to be a series where you have to come out. You don't want to be up by seven because they're they're going to be a top five ranked team. You don't need to beat them by twenty. Yeah. But you need to be. You might be up by seven. Can we come out and put together a twelve play drive? That is a blend of running and passing and not us just taking shots down the field where we're not burning clock and being a prudent steward of the football. So how a prudent steward. Prudent steward. How do you balance that for the next three weeks, Bob? <sighs> Jay Z when like I don't know, put in Cal McCord. Do whatever you want. Everyone yeah. like I mean the defense but, they're terrible this week. But you also can't, right? Just flip the switch and say, Well, now it's November twenty sixth. Yeah, and, no doubt. Know, like yeah, not, I mean I don't know. Do what you let the them have is. a twelfth guy. <laughs> an unblocked, an unblocked hey, Pat, we're going to let like, you guys have 12 on defense today. Go just ahead. like how 7 on 7 for Ohio State yeah. practice is now 9 on 7. Like yeah. Northwestern gets to play with 13 this week. We'll let you play too deep with an, eight, with an, extra, yeah, man with an extra man in there. You just Let's fix your go. space. Yeah, I don't care how you do it. It'll be good for us. Good, it'll be good work for us. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to imagine he's going to try and manufacture some things. You know, the Maybe I was, on the third and short. So, you know, just say hey, – Put our big boys in there. They're going to bring their big guys in and see what happens. The one thing just I was disappointed, well, Northwestern, practice. they have no. Well, they I know, but you just you, you try and muck it up as much as you can on a short yardage. You guys are the, you guys get to ask the questions. so You get to ask a lot more questions than we do. Yeah, but you get to ask questions. Their and public, you get to ask public, a lot of different kind of questions, they're public, I'm sure. They're publicly answered. A little more leash. This is, this is, I think, something that as I was watching, just curious of they've gone to 22 personnel. They've gone under center. When you're struggling running the football out of your traditional 11 personnel, three wide receivers and a tight end, was there a thought of like, hey, we do it in short yards. Let's go with it in the field and see if they have a solution for this because not many people do it. And we're a team that has the personnel and the capability to execute like this. Especially with the versatility that Stover has, that, that Mitch Rossi has, that you can bring in. G. Scott's playing well. G. Scott didn't play on Saturday. Yeah. I mean, yeah. This, is, this is the thing I was confused about really on Saturday is that they just seemed content to go as basic as possible. And even even the 10 first down catches for Marvin Harrison, there was nothing elaborate. This was just oh, yeah. nine slants. Slant. Yeah, most of them were, yeah, slants. And, and, and uh, there's a faction of Ohio State fans like, well, it's about damn time you run a slant because they're unguardable when you have receivers like that. But at the same time, you know, you're talking about those bubble screens. There's no jet sweeps. There's no nothing else to get the ball to the edges. Every single time that, you line up in in the pistol, they run. Everyone knows it. They run in the exact same play every time. You just have to figure out, like, is that... Well, Ryan said as long as he knows that everyone knows it, they're good. But That's he, not a knock. He's like, we're aware of our tendencies. I'm like, as long oh, as you yeah. know it. Okay. 
Oh, but so it's so self, he's self scout. If he if he doesn't actually realize that that's creating problems for them, uh, I think he I think he's aware. But I, I know. That. As he, I know. <laughs> I, that's but thing. he's doing it over and over. Hey, because you know why? Like Jim Knowles said, "Give me a yard and I'll defend it." Okay. You know what? I I get in arguments with my guy Rothman all the time about this. If you can't get a yard, you don't deserve to win, guys. I don't care if they know what, that we're going to run the football. They can put twelve guys up there, dig them out for a yard, and go grind one out. Ohio State should be able to get a yard against anyone. There you and go. The fact that they have still struggled when that has been the thing all year the long. Focus, yeah. That is a that is a concern, but you don't want to overblow it heading into the next three weeks. You just need to fix it. And and when you come off of an off week, and Ryan Day said going into the off week that one thing they were going to work on was fundamentals, getting back to basics. And you come out of the off week in the last two weeks, you look like you've mm. lost some fundamentals and you're not doing things that are basic. That's a concern. Burm touched on the you know the jet sweeps and that stuff. Right before the off date against Michigan State, we saw this whole variety of different <laughs> run schemes and concepts. Xavier Johnson is motioning into the backfield yeah. then getting a pitch going. Like some of these things that we've seen, Ameka Ibuka on a jet sweep, on a pop pass, get easily to the edge and let him run. I just I don't really understand why the choice was made repeatedly to do that through a bubble screen. Like if the first I I'm not a coach and I'm not paid millions of dollars. But well, if, it, if it doesn't work, one the first might be time, true. I don't like, know about the other. Like, I just think it puts the like, guys. So let's in bad try position. the other thing that works. It puts like, your defender, your your blockers in bad position. Mm-hmm. Kate Stover is getting a lot of flack for his inability and yeah, not to, being able to, to block to, a guy, who block can, a guy who's running full speed at him yeah. from a thousand different angles. Yeah, uh, it, you know these are these are really good players at Penn State, and you're not going to be able to do that in a game against Michigan where you're going to have athletes that are similar, and and you're going to need to put those guys in better positions. So. It's just a little bit confusing, and I again, how much of it is putting your guys to a test, and how much of it is saying it doesn't matter because we can just turn it. We could just do this. Yeah, but just try David, something else. David then. Copperfield, like fire up the laser show. It's time. <laughs> it's Penn State is as much uh, you know talk as there was going into the game about how good their secondary was. They were not they able to stop. stop yeah, they didn't see him. All. Yeah, from the start of the. I mean, the first throw they of the game. The double, double well, they're actually almost better at those little bubble screens. Or, I mean, they're great. I feel like they always have good corners that can blitz really well, they, well they at Penn Saturday. State, you know, and good tacklers. Porter and, Porter and Allen, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, uh, good, they're good players. They said it on Saturday. They, they do a good job of taking away the easy stuff, but the, the problem for them, unfortunately, was that for Ohio State, the easy stuff is just throwing it 20 yards down the field to Marvin Harrison every play because that's easy. But you're not going to get that all the time. And, and so how does Ohio State fix what is clearly an issue with being predictable on offense in the run game? Because it doesn't matter if they're predictable on offense in the past. Well, I know one way you can't fix it is you get my guy healthy well, and get him out there and give him the rock. Well, it was interesting. But uh, we can talk. Can we talk? Said he's good. Play? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he he tweeted something about being good. Said he's didn't good. He? he said this. Yeah. And then last, it was his birthday on Saturday, right? So oh, he man. goes in, and I think um, that we the were the best way to ice your hand finger is with a cold can. I think we were looking Just, at a totally different game. And then I'm, he put it up here and he checked it. He's like, good to go. I'm good to go. We were looking at a different game on Saturday if Mayan Williams was able to stay in that oh, game. He was starting to pound it. You felt uh, like they were about two to carries and He was very good on both of them. Yes. Yeah. I've said this from pretty much the start of the year, that Mayan Williams, the way he's playing, yeah. I was probably more wrong about him going into training camp in the start of the year. Than Who was right Fred, about him? Berm and Jay-Z were, were more right about that. I'll, I have no problem saying no, yeah. that. I'm saying now that – he is the running back that has to be the yes. primary ball carrier for our offense. State. Is better when he is in the when he is, in and the there's game. not really any question about it. I it agree. was very clear on Saturday. Not that Trey is not great, and if there's a spot to get, I mean, he's explosive and he spot. will go. There is a spot, we but saw. there was a third and one. Yeah, yeah then you want Mayan Williams. You, that Mayan Williams would have gotten all day long, and Trey didn't get. It. And he's, you know, he can say he's good to go. <clears throat> like, there's two issues that are going on at the same time. So. I'm in a little bit more of a wait and see mode because he doesn't need to play against Northwestern. He doesn't need to play against Indiana. Fair. He doesn't need to play against Maryland. The knee injury is a real thing. I I am told that it's not really going to be something that gets back to 100 percent during the course of the year. But it's not yeah. something that's going to get worse no, either. Just as far as my understanding, and as long as he can run and do what he has to do, every running back in the country deals with. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, welcome to week nine. Yeah, yeah. week nine, that's, exactly. Yeah. So that's the that's the pain management situation. The hand issue. I don't know what. What kind of handy? cast? Ha- yeah, handy situation. Well, I mean, Z- Zeke had a cast on his hand. Yeah, you know, I'm not, down I'm not, the stretch of an important. Not run. saying that either one of those knock him out for a long term. Just good news—you got three weeks to get healthy. You have 
some time to figure it out. Yeah. Some good news is that there management. is a, a role for Travion Henderson, and we saw it on Saturday. Yeah. When Ohio State, which, again, we're talking play calling and just philosophy, they seem to be trying to avoid going up-tempo this year for some reason. Because it makes it too easy, Berm. I, I, that's, that's, <laughs> I'm wondering if that's the problem. Like, it's too easy. You saw the two If they're times, not they're like, set, they have yeah. zero chance. The two, <laughs> two times they went tempo, you have the first half, the first quarter yeah, drive. Bing, bong, bang. First quarter drive, they go tempo, they score four plays on, with Mine Williams on a four-year touchdown. Third, fourth quarter, they get the ball down 21-16, to 16, they go tempo, score in three plays, 75 yards. And that's the, the play where Trey had the 45-yard touchdown. Oh, mm-hmm. Because when you get him in space, when you tell oh, him, yeah. go here, yeah. he's really, And really when there's good. nobody there, he turns those burners on. It's when he's having to decide where to go, there's a problem. And so I think that he's just <clears throat> not a guy that you want to run in, in some of this. I remember, you know, I remember thinking the same thing in the Clemson Sugar Bowl. It's like, they didn't do any of this tempo really all year. And then Brent Venables is like, his head is spinning on the side. He keeps trying to cheat and call other calls in and. Like, no, we're not going to do that. You're just, you have no shot. Yeah. One of the things that, you know, I remember Trey from maybe the Minnesota game. I think they ran like the swing screens to him. And they like, talk about like an extension of the running game. His like, first little, game. Little swing screen, you know, toss it out there. You get Cade, you get, you know, Dwan, whoever it is, guard, mm-hmm. tight end, guard, set, like swing them out. And it's space. You get guys up climbing and you give them some room to go. And especially when they're playing man, because you can just have the wide receivers run off the corners. Yeah, yeah. And that helps give you that, like, and that's just something other. I know Ryan is one of the smartest offensive guys I've ever talked to. Kevin Wilson, I want to put in that category as well. Yeah. Like, they know a lot about off. They know more about offensive football than I'll ever know. Yeah. They've forgotten more than I've known. And so I know that they know these things. And that's why I see some of this <laughs> and you watch it. And it goes back to Berm's point of how do you balance trying to get practice in the game against the real life, putting yourself in a difficult situation? Because I think it's great that they had to make plays in, late in the yeah. third and fourth quarter. Oh, 100%. Because there, that will happen later in the game or later in the season. The fact that you have to make plays when it yeah. actually matters. You're back against the wall yes. a little bit and that thing's going good for you and you got to go out and make stuff happen. Go get a stop. Yeah. Go get a pick up a first down. Yeah. You need to. They did. They got to win. It's 44-31. Uh, meanwhile, back in the big house for the – Third time, really, in the last six home games for Michigan. You guys have been in that tunnel. We've been in that tunnel many times as well, not with pads on and um, mainly uh, ca- capturing footage of what's happening. Mm, crazy. What can they do? This is not like, – obviously what Michigan mm. State did is not appropriate behavior. But I am a little bit of the some opinion – with some, some shankability, though. That it, it looked like they did, yeah. Michigan has fostered well, there this are, environment. There are lawsuits coming from that. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Michigan can sue Michigan. Do you believe Michigan State? Michigan players so, and their parents will sue Michigan. Considering State. Ward Manuel is talking about letting the authorities play. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what Clearly to do there. Wrong, I mean, it looked like the it looked like the guy in blue was somewhere where he probably shouldn't have it's been. A very simple fix because it's like super one team simple. goes, the other team yeah. goes, right? So super simple fix. Michigan should either wait well, yes, or switch well, sidelines and go first. Everybody else did wait, right? Except for one player. So two things can be true at the same time. The Michigan State player's behavior was. Abhorrent. Abhorrent at best. Criminal, potentially worse. I don't think, as, as long as there were no dumb. serious physical injuries done, which I don't believe that there were. I mean, some guy got hit in the face a couple times with a helmet. So well, Yeah, because you didn't. You went in there without a helmet on. Well, I mean, I mean that's a whole other. Play stupid whole other, games, you win stupid prizes. I, I, Coach I, I, is telling yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm just saying, if that's the case, if, if your standard, I mean, if your line is no one got seriously hurt, somebody got If you would have had your helmet yeah. on, you wouldn't have got hurt. Well, you've seen the chart. On. F around, find out, yeah. or whatever it goes. Yeah. Yeah. That was way up here, yeah. It was F around. Yeah, he F yeah. around, and he found, he found out. Yeah, yeah, yeah he right. found there out. That's every time, the co- <laughs> that any, every yeah. time there's been a fight, every coach I've ever had, they'd stop and be like, Put your helmet on. Uh, what are you running in there without your helmet <clears> on for? Because it, it limits the ability to get hurt. <laughs> yes. Now, those guys kicking him on the ground and stuff, that was excessive. But you go back to the impetus of all of it, there is an entire Michigan State team that's going up. Everyone else on their team, like, oh, he's just trying to get to the locker room. Buddy, you rest your team's back there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's on. And so I say, we well, was just trying to get to the locker room. Where were your coaches at? Where was your support staff, the uh, uh, security personnel authorities, building a divider saying, nope, can't go up there until they're all they're already there. That The protocol being a failure is also an issue, and that is on Michigan's hands. Yeah. And, if I was, and the I, lack of security. I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, but they need to be guys, there in between. Fans. We see it every every year. Fans reaching over, hitting Ohio State players. I would just like, grab them. I pull them in. To, come on in. Come on down. You got to you, you rattle the cage. <laughs> about your hand, bit. You wanted come to on. touch this head. Come down. Here's a closer look. Yeah, exactly. And, and so that's Jacob Hester told me this story. And I'm, I I need to get some. Uh, I can't remember 
exactly because we talked about it with the Penn State thing two weeks ago. That's right. And he goes, you know, we got in a scuffle. I think it was with Florida. There was this and that. Players started getting into it in the tunnel because they had a close tunnel situation or something in pregame. He goes, there was a stay out patrol woman out there. And he goes, she was like, stop it, guys. And like, whatever. And she like, she cracked her taser. And everyone's like, all right, we're good. And <laughs> cracked the taser. And he, she's like, <laughs> he goes, this thing was loud. He goes, <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. I mean, yeah, so they all walked away. And I'm like, exactly. That's what you need. They're like, hey, yeah. guys, I know we're all ju- I know we're gotcha all juiced here. up. Yeah. It's an intense moment. You know, Jim Harbaugh running reverse passes when you're up 29-7, all this stuff. But, hey, <laughs> nobody yeah. wants this. You crack the taser. You make sure there's – because the coaches – I was just talking to New Heisel about this. I'm like, even you can't even have coaches there because sometimes the coaches act worse than the damn players because mm-hmm. they're 50 and think they're 20. Well, Jimmy Franks was a part of that, according to – uh, Michigan and everybody else a couple weeks ago. So. Sophomoric behavior. Sophomoric whiner. I would say, you know what, Jim? <clears throat> Come and meet me outside, like Hector, <laughs> like Hector <laughs> and Achilles. So yeah. no one else has to die. Yeah. Cash send me outside. Me, How about that? Send me. That might be the solution. <laughs> send me your best. The solution is clear. Yes, wait, I'm with wait, you. Bulldoze the or, <laughs> but, oh. or you can't, <laughs> I mean, that would be probably a good time. I mean, to that's one way. Wait, to go how about many it? other tunnels are even like this? None. Like, yeah, I don't. I don't remember seeing that hardly anywhere else. But it doesn't matter. It is what it is. It's there. They just need to develop protocol around it. Berm, tell us your That's protocol. That's it. I mean, that it. Michigan either has to fire switch hoses, sidelines, fire hoses. Switch sidelines and go first or stay on your sideline and wait. But then they don't get to touch the banner. They can, they they can, can still run, run out and come back. <laughs> around. Around. The Ohio State players always run through and then back in John Hickson. Knock it, yeah, knock that it down. down. Knock it down. Give, me, give me that banner. That's give what I'm that. saying. Like, that was 50 years ago. It was in yeah, 71 or 73. They ran through, pulled the banner down, all that. All this stuff has always been happening. Develop right. protocols to make sure that there's yeah. limited interaction. You can't be shocked when something happens yes. that everyone knows is going to happen, and it happens all the time, yes. but then it just happens to happen in a way that's a bit more happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like It's it's escalation. It's going to happen. See. It happens yeah. all, all the, the happenings. Time. It happens all the time. That's a that's different right. Listening to Every single Ohio State-Michigan game, there is a near fight in the tunnel. Every single one. Listening to Ward Manuel sit up there and just be so self-righteous about all that crap. I wanted to punch him in the nose. Well, just don't do it in the tunnel. Go in the tunnel and do it. Do it out in the middle of the field. Yes. <laughs> just, it's just one of these weird situations. Like, you know what's going to happen. It's set up to happen that way. You are not going to have yeah. 220 year olds mm. who are the most testosterone people on the planet at a highly emotional, at a highly moment. emotional yes. moment and have. And <laughs> Doors right across from each other. They have to walk up the, the entire thing. The things that are thing. said in that oh, I mean, yeah. are, are criminal. <laughs> they say criminal things. <laughs> they say criminal things. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're, hey, buddy. <laughs> That's slander. They're saying <laughs> they are saying criminal things in the tunnel. It's only going to be obvious. It's going to lead to physical criminal things happening. Officer, that's why you need like big. Honestly, the way to do it is if you're going to do it like this, Kevin Warren, get some Big Ten officials down there. And I'm not talking about some scrawny little compliance officer. I'm, like I'm talking about John Cheney style goons <laughs> that can keep guys back. You know what? They got nightsticks. They got tasers. Yes. And if worst case comes to it, water cannons. Swat gear. <laughs> Get them going. Yeah. Whoa, you guys want to fight? <laughs> just freaking give them the water cannon. What if they just turned it into a giant slip and slide? Whoever wins, whoever gets the bottom slide on that. Honestly, there's a pretty good grade on it. You'd get oh, some nice. Be. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. It'd be a lot deep. harder to fight if you wondered that you were going to slip with the ball. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Get rid of the turf. All of a sudden, everybody if just comes make out. It, of the make it poured concrete yeah. so on your cleats you cannot yeah. get any type of grip. <laughs> and it's like fighting on ice. It's yeah. like hockey fights. You can't get a solid yeah. shot because you have no traction. Keep on your helmet. Put on skates. There we go. That's that's really not that hard. Done. You're welcome. America. We just we just solved that problem. A number of solutions presented to you as always <laughs> yeah. from the Hershey Lounge at Rooster is a fun casual join, a fun casual chat. Obviously, November 26th can't get here soon enough. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to go provide some coverage of Ohio State at Northwestern, 11 a.m. local kickoff. You want square predictions from these fellas? I don't know. It's Northwestern. I didn't think it was okay. Necessary. Not necessary. 77, 66, 10. I'm going to give them six. You got to think. Backups or something, you know. We're gonna put some. I don't know. Did you watch him play? Well, I guess they did score something against Iowa. Did you want, want to throw? I just figure something. Forty-eight to seven. Forty. Oh wow. Yeah. What do you think? Does Ryan? Do they take a nap in the second half? <laughs> they, they know. It's they a lot of practice out watch. there. Was that the last beat down there? And they're like, right before halftime, they kicked a fifty. Sit down. They're like, let's let's try a fifty yard. Ryan's only going to use ten people on offense. So so. Ryan, Ryan walk over and ask Pat I, if you want to call it. Number, yeah. <laughs> number, hey, it, running clock it's here. It's not going to be necessary. And so I think 40, 48, 7. 56 to nothing. There's no way that Northwestern can score. I don't believe that for a single second. Remember that was the other the last time there was such a bizarre trip. 
Pat Fitzgerald had just come out publicly and was like, if you guys have some suggestions for my offense, you know, tweet him at me to hashtag I don't care. <laughs> that was and great. Like, I love it. Even score. Like, this has been going on for years. And like Pat Fitzgerald's just like, ah, I don't yeah. care. Every, Whatever. Every four I, years you know they what, win the Big Ten hey, West, though. You know there what you I go. do like? The, I enjoy the fact that the Big Ten is getting a little SEC ish. And we've got, you know, you, you've had, <laughs> you had Ole Miss, and I know this is a little bit of a uh, deviation here, yeah. but you know what? We're going to get It's a Let's fun, casual you conversation. You've got Lane taking on Jimbo. And Lane, they're rushing for like 250 yards. Yeah. And he's calling him a clown in the offseason. Meanwhile, Lane's seven and one, beating people down, and they're three and five. Yeah. And I was like, I can't wait to see what he says after the game. They call me a clown. Let's see if he's got a Joker costume yeah, Joker. for me. After Maybe the he's game. got a Joker suit for me. It's so great. <laughs> Lane is the best, right? You got to have Oh, yeah. Oh, he dude, believe me. Down when he, there with those guys. When he saw them struggling and they can't stop the run, and Lane's like, we're just not just yeah. running up and down their fe- uh, face. When all he's the head coach at Auburn next year. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's I don't. Great. You think he'll, he won't go to Auburn? Really? Okay. I think he would enjoy the opportunity to become Nick Saban's foil. How many? Here's the best part. He wants is, to. Is there a is there a way that Lane Kiffin could somehow coach like four different? SEC schools? <laughs> well, they should just be relegating a few of them. He should just coach everybody yeah. in the West except going against Alabama. That, that would be, be awesome. so great. But I, I could not wait when I saw those scores coming in. I was watching him pound the rock. He ran it like fifty times on him. It was so beautiful. Yeah. Great season for Jimbo. He's, he's man, yeah, hey, that recruiting. Class. It used to be called Texas eight and four, and now what? Long for the good old days. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> so you don't have it anymore. Uh, that's real a real shame down there in Aggieland. Yeah, Land. Such uh, a shame. Good show. Enjoyed it as always. Getting ready for another one. November for contenders. That's Jay Z, Bob, Berm. I'm Austin. Thanks to Nicole for having us back in here for Roosters for a fun, fun casual chat. Chat, uh, I can't speak anymore. Zip is a lot about. That means it's time to end. Enjoy your week. We'll see you Saturday.